Now we'll discuss the prerequisite to understand the working of the drill fire timer. Basically, drill fire timer IC was first introduced around 1971 by the Signetic Corporation as a SC triple five, and it was called as the IC time machine. Many manufacturers are manufacturing a timer. The name of the manufacturers are given in this. You can glance once. Whenever you want, you can pause this video and you can go through the slide in detail. Pinout is also given. One is for a T package, another is for a V package. In most of the laboratory, we'll find a V package. In most of the labs, we found any thrill file is used for doing the experiments. Thrill file timer pinout, pin number one is ground, two is a trigger, three is a output, four is a reset, five is a control voltage, six is a threshold, seven is a discharge, eight is a VCC. You can pause for some time and even you can try to revise. You should become an expert in the pinout of a thrill file timer. Prerequisite. What you should know to understand the complete working of a thrill fire timer. The first one, you should know op amp as a comparator. You should know the working of a transistor. You should know working of a flip flop. And you should know a resistor divider network. How to find out a voltage across the resistors. Why I have to study? This question will come into the mind. Theory exams, some marks will be there. You should get a good marks for that you have to study. Experiments are going to do in some of the labs. You should know theory then only you can do the lab properly. And you can do a hobby projects, mini project using a thrill fire timer. And being an engineer, you should know thrill fire timer. There are many applications. And basically it operates in monostable and reversible mode. Applications are listed in this slide. Linear ramp generator, pulse stretcher, pulse width modulator, pulse position modulation, missing pulse indicator, frequency divider, voltage regulator, so on, so forth. You can continuously you can make a big list. And just now I told it operates in a two modes. One is the stable and monostable. Supply voltage you can give 4.5 to 18. You can give around 8 volts, 10 volts whenever you are conducting the experiment. This is a very important basic which you should understand before you go to the drill fire timer. Operational amplifier, we have connected a 10k, 10k to the 12 volt supply. Inverting is connected to the in between 2 10k and VI is given to the non inverting terminal. See the circuit diagram, try to answer this question. What should be the VI? voltage to glow the LED. We all of us know LED will connect in forward bias. We know it should be high. And when we use a operational amplifier in the open loop configuration, either I may get a plus VSAT or minus VSAT. LED will glow when I get a plus VSAT. There are two inputs, inverting and non-inverting. And inverting it is a six volts. I want output should be plus VSAT. When it is possible, when VI goes above reference plus 6 volts, what I have given to the non inverting, uh, sorry, inverting terminal. Now, when VI becomes more than 6 volts, automatically V0 becomes a plus VSAT and LED will glow. This is one basic which we are going to use in the thrill fire timer operation. Try to pause, understand, you can repeat. Let us take us same way. Now, VI is given to the Inverting terminal, whereas non inverting is connected to the 6 volts. When the LED will glow, no doubt LED will glow whenever the plus VSAT output is there. And plus VSAT will get when a non inverting is more. Now LED will glow when VI goes below the 6 volts because non inverting terminal I have given 6 volts. Whenever VI becomes less than 6, automatically Output V0 becomes plus VSAT, LED will conduct. Once if you understand, thrill fire timer operation becomes easy. 
You can pause, repeat, try to understand this music. The same thing, both the uh, operational amplifier are considered in this particular slide. When OPM1 will give the high plus is at, no doubt, when the threshold becomes greater than two third rules. When it becomes two third VCC, above two third VCC, automatically you will get a high. Similarly, when our op amp 2 will give you the high, when trigger becomes less than one third VCC. So, this is the basics. Once if you understand this particular slide, or you can understand very easily the operation of triple phi timer. This is the internal block diagram of a triple phi timer. Whatever, just now you have taken a comparator 1, comparator 2, it is there. There you have to remember two third voltage and one third voltage. Please try to remember this rule for internal block diagram. So this is only we are going to use for the operation a stable mode, monostable mode. You can pause and go through all the pins as well as the block diagram. Thank you. Why it's called rule for timer? Because we use a 5K, 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 three resistors. Hence they used to call it as a rule for timer. Thank you.